Okay, in Mark 11, Matthew 21, Jesus cursed the fig tree, but it wasn't season for figs. That's in Mark 11. Let me get you the article and I'll explain it. Guys, here it is, the article. Please save it. Click on it. Save it. Why did Jesus curse the fig tree when it wasn't season for figs? Here you go, brother. You got the article? Um, I just sent it to you in the comment section. You got it? I think I got like, I think I got the... I gave you all of them. One. No, but you should go down. I just posted it there. It's right there, man. You don't get it? Okay. You saw it? Oh, wait. You saw it? No, no, I don't see it. Oh, you know why? Because it didn't go through. I gave you guys the wrong link. I'm sorry. Because remember, I'm mentally challenged. Here. Hey, brother. Can you be patient with my mental challenges? Can you hang? I am, I'm patient. <laughs> so patient. You, you will be patient with my mental challenges? Everything. Wait, so you admit I have mental challenges, huh? This is the second time you agreed with me I got issues. Instead of saying, no, brother, you got no mental challenges. You're perfect. You see how you are, you sinner? I got you again. Man, dude. Anyway, guys, I gave you the right link. Here it is. Did you get it? I sent it to you. Here it is. Save it. Here's the argument. Yes, I Here's the argument. I gave you the link. Just save them. I'm going to explain the answer. Are you ready? You guys ready? What's the answer? Notice it's around Passover week, and Passover takes place in spring, right? And spring is usually when you get the first harvest, correct? Yes. Okay. Pay attention to the argument, guys. Pay attention to the objection. Jesus went looking for figs, and he found no figs, and he cursed the tree, and the fig tree withered, even though it wasn't season for figs. That's what Mark says. Why did Jesus curse a fig tree expecting to find figs when it wasn't seasoned for figs? You understand the objection? Now, this yes, shows yeah, he's an ignoramus. In the article I gave you, anyone who knows Israel geography, if you are familiar with the geography of Israel and Jer Jerusalem, you will know that right before fig season, a fig tree will have small knobs called taksh. Taksh. The taksh is edible. You can eat it. The taksh is an indication this tree is good and will produce fruit, uh, figs. If there are no taksh, that means this fig tree is no good and it's withered. That means Jesus was looking for taksh. He was looking for these knobs to eat. When he saw none, that was an indication that the fig tree was barren and good for nothing but destruction. You with me there? Did you get it or no? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm still. I'm still like. Um, trying to comprehend. Okay, let me. Let me. Let me lay hands on you. Knock you out. Maybe I'll knock some sense into you. <sighs> when you approach a fig tree right around fig season, because this is right around fig season. What you expect to find on a fig tree is things called knob. It's called a knob. The word is taksh. Those knobs are edible. You can eat them. If you find knobs on the fig tree, that's an indication that this fig tree is good and it's going to produce figs. If there are no knobs, no taksh, that means it's barren. It's no good. So what Jesus oh. would be looking for is what? He's well, looking for the, no the, the knobs, the taksh. He found none, which means it had no figs to bear, which means it's barren, good for nothing but destruction. Okay, now it makes sense, yeah. Okay, but now what did the fig tree represent? It wasn't simply he was hungry and there were no knobs and no tox showing it's barren. In the article I show you that, Israel is likened to a fig tree that's spoiled. So this is a played out parable in which by cursing the fig tree, the fig tree is a picture of Israel. Jesus has come to Jerusalem looking for spiritual fruit. He finds none because Israel is spoiled and rotten and it's good for nothing but destruction, which is why he then destroys the city and the temple 40 years later. 
Okay. Making sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm Let me prove to you Israel is symbolized by the fig tree. Are you ready? Yes. Luke 13, 6 to 9, first and last. Luke 13, 6 to 9. Six. Yeah, I'm going to read it when he posts it. Luke 13, 6 to 9. It's all my article. He also spoke a parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. He came doing what? He came seeking fruit on it and found none. So what did he do, brother? This year. Wait. Before the rapture, before I leave you behind. He came looking for what? He came looking for the, the fig trees. Are you guessing? Was I reading it to you or to me? Because you were not paying attention again. Yeah, I was. I was actually wasn't. I was trying to go on the page. So my bad. No, it, it ain't my bad. It's definitely your bad. It ain't Timmy's bad. It ain't Joey's bad. Are you gonna listen this time? Yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm on the page now. Oh, so it wasn't good enough that I read it. So now you read it. Luke thirteen six to nine. Okay, yeah. Read it. That's where it says he. Uh, he spake his uh, also this parable that one. What, a what certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Keep reading, dude. What do you? Hold on, hold on. Let me have okay. Timmy read for you because he reads faster and smoother than you. Come on, man. Okay, and then he goes. Then said he unto the the desert, the dresser of his vineyard behold these three years i come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down why cumbereth it the ground and he answers said unto him lord let it alone this year also till i shall dig about it and dunk in and dug it and if it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shall cut it down okay Israel's likened to a fig tree, right? Yes. And when Jesus came looking for figs, he found no figs, right? Yes. And for three years, he found no figs on the fig tree called Israel, right? Yes. And he said, you know what? Cut it down. However, the, the dresser, the one who, who was nurturing and nourishing the fig tree with the hopes that it would produce figs, says, give it one more year. And if not, then burn it down. So you understand now why he went to a fig tree, found none, and he yeah. cursed it? Because the fig tree, that actual tree, represented Israel, that Jesus keeps coming to Jerusalem. Looking for fruit, he finds nothing but spoiled, rotten fruit. And therefore, Israel left, leaves him no choice but now to destroy it like he destroyed that fig tree. And when did he destroy it? 40 years, 40 years later, when he destroyed Jerusalem and the temple because Israel was spiritually dead. Barren, producing rotten fruit. Okay. Now that I, now I like this. This is I, I get the, I get it now. I really do. Jennifer, God willing, Jennifer, I'll do the session tomorrow because you asked. Okay. So you got it now, brother. Yes, I did. Thank you so much. Okay. So you understand. First of all, why did he curse an actual fig tree? Because he was looking for knobs, tax. The touch would a sign that this fig tree is fruitful, right? Yes. Finding none, what did that mean? It, it wasn't fruitful. So it's good for nothing but to be destroyed, right? Yeah, pretty much. But in destroying that physical fig tree, it was a sign of Jerusalem. Because notice when this is taking place, when he's going into the temple. He enters the yeah. temple and he cleans it. From its evil and impurity. So instead of finding spiritual fruit in the temple, he finds spiritual corruption and evil, and he's disgusted. So that act is a sign. Your days are numbered, Jerusalem, because you are like that fig tree. Cursed, rotten, no good comes out of you, leaving me no choice but to destroy you like I destroyed that fig tree. That's the point.